everybody. Welcome to Mary Mother Church Catholic News. This is Krishna with George. The 29th of August, we celebrate the feast of St. Euprasia Elevatingal. St. Euprasia, born as Rosa Elevatingal, was an Indian Carmelite nun of the Sirimalabar Church. To know more about her early life, we move on to Joshua. Early life of St. Euprasia Elevatingal. She was born Rosa Elevatingal on 17 October 1877. The Siramalabar Catholic Nasrani family in Kathur, Vignalikuda, Trishul district in Kerala. Rosa was the eldest child of a wealthy landowner, Sir Putkar Anthony and his wife Kuneti. She was baptized on 26 October 1877 in Our Lady of Camel Foreign Church, Edifice. At the age of nine, Rosa is said to have experienced an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which led her to make a commitment never to marry and to commit her entire life to God. When she was ten, she entered the boarding school attached to the first indigenous Carmelite community in Saramalabar Church, founded by the saints Kuriakos Elias Chavara and Leopold Becaro in 1866 at Kunamau in Ernakulam district. As she grew older, Rosa wanted to enter the sisters of the Mother of Carmel, who followed the rule of the third order of the discussed Carmelites. Her father opposed this as he wanted to arrange a marriage for her, the son of another prosperous merchant in the region. Seeing her resolve, her father eventually relented and accompanied her to the convent. Thank you, Joshua. Now, Renat will join us from St. Mary's Convent, Ullu, to report about St. Euprasia's divine call and education. Myself, Renat. Now I am standing in front of St. Mary's Convent, Ullu. In 1897, Mar John Mary the first native bishop of the Sero Malabar Catholic Archeparchy of Trishul, established a Carmelita Convent in America. On 9th May, he brought in all five nuns from Kunam Mawa who belonged to his diocese. The next day, Rosa was received as the postulant, taking na the name Sister Euprasia of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and was admitted to the no no novitiate of the congregation on 10th January 1898. Her constant poor health, however, threatened her to stay in the convent as the superiors considered her dismissing her. Euprasia is said to have had a vision of the Holy Family, at which point the illness she had long felt ceased. Euphrasia made her solemn profession on 24 May 1900 during the blessed blessing of the newly founded St. Mary's Convent Olu. After she looked her perpetual vows, she was appointed assistant to the novitiate, novice mistress. Though frail in health, in 1904, Euphrasia was appointed novice mistress of the congregation. She held this position for nine years until 1930 when she was made Mother Superior of the convent, where she was to live her rest of her life uh, servicing as the Mother of Superior until 1916. She endeavored to lead a life of constant prayer and devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, becoming known to many people as the Praying Mother. Euphrasia spent much of her day in convent chapel before the Blessed Sacrament, to which the, she had a strong devotion. She, had, she also nourished a great love and devotion for the Virgin Mary. Euphrasia died on 29 August 1952 at St. Mary's Convent. Her tomb has become a pilgrimage site in as miracles have been reported by some of the faith. Thank you, Renate. Now, we have Amit to report the trials faced by St. Euphrasia and her illness. Trials. Rosa's life was full of trials and she tried hard to overcome them. There were many times when Rosa would have been sent back home for treatment and improvement of health as she felt too often to a victim, victim of ill health. She was very much grieved when the authorities said that she did not have the health to stay in the body. She was afraid whether she would be been sent back home. Her only solace at such times was the Immaculate Mother Mary. She prayed to the Blessed Virgin Mary with much confidence and trust. Mother, am I not your daughter? Permit me to become a member of your congregation and consummate my sacrifice. She stood close to that maternal heart and Mother Mary took her in her charge and protected her like the apple of her eye. Rosa Sikh In 1889, in the month of September, Rosa had an attack of rheumatism and a frail body was exhausted and she lost the luster of her eyes. Treatment was in vain according to the medical experts, but it was not possible to send her home for lack of proper convenience. 
As her condition grew worse, the nun arranged to administer viaticum to her. When they found her sinking, then as all of them fixed their eyes upon her, there came a strange, incredible change. Rosa's pale little face suddenly beamed up with life and beauty. Her eyes got back the luster and her face became extremely beautiful and joyful. She stretched out her arms as if someone was receiving her. The onlookers were startled as she got up and sat showing perfectly regained health. Thank you Amit. Now we have Sneha to give us a report on how Saint Euphrasia could reach the depths of the soul and how she faced the attacks from evil spirits. Hello Sneha. Mother Euphrasia had a very loving and concerning look. Her love and concern would reach the depths of the soul. Once, a dying sister was on her deathbed. Mother Euphrasia went to the tabernacle with folded hands and started praying for the dying sister. She came back to the dying sister and asked her other sisters to leave. She asked the dying sister if she deserved any forgiveness. The dying sister said she had hurt her mother superior with rude behavior. Then she asked the mother Euphrasia to write a letter conveying her feelings. She took her last breath very peacefully. The Lord had handed over mother Euphrasia to be tempted by evil spirits. She suffered attacks from evil spirits for 8 years and 10 months. She had suffered troubles pains and temptations for a very long time by evil spirits. For after all that, she wrote a letter telling about all these attacks from evil spirits. Mother Mary, Saint Joseph and Jesus came from heaven to console. Thank you Snehal. Now we have Alina to report the death of Saint Euphrasia. Hello Alina. Hi Christo. After a long time of 75 years, Euphrasia, the praying mother passed away in the convent at Ullur on 29th August 1952. It was a wonder that the church bell at Charalayam Parish began to run without stop at her death. To all of those who prayed, the one who never forget even after death, granted heavenly power through miracles and signs. This holy virgin who decided to be, become an unknown saint is raised today to the glory of the altar. By the Almighty and the sweet of her sanity is spread worldwide. Thank you, Alina. Now, we have Ryan to tell about the officially reported miracles of St. Euphrasia. St. Euphrasia's first reported miracle was curing a carpenter from bone cancer, curing Thomas Tarkin, a furniture polishing worker who was diagnosed with cancer by, uh, in Trishur, Thomas was admitted to the hospital for one week. Later, before the surgery, a scan by the doctor showed no sign of tumour, despite an early scan showing the clear evidence of a tumour. Thomas's sister, Rosie, claimed that the cure was the result of her praying to Euphrasia. The second reported miracle happened to a seven-year-old child named Jewel in the Trishur district. The child had a tumour in his neck which made it difficult for him to swallow any food. Doctors at Danya Hospital in Trishu said that his disease was incurable. As Jewel's family came from a poor background, their only option was to pray for divine in intercession. After his grandmother prayed to Euphrasia, doctors noticed his tumour began to shrink. A doctor at Danya Hospital examined him once again and found the tumour to have disappeared. Many other doctors examined the boy and stated there was no medical basis for this. It is said that it was because of St. Euphrasia's divine intercession that this boy was being able to save. Thank you, Ryan. We have the stages of canonization reports by Rhea. This is in September 1986, Mother Cleopatra takes initiative for the canonization of Mother Euphrasia. 26 June 1987, permission from Superior Mother General Prima to take up the course. 13th August 1987, permission from Bishop Ma Joseph Kundukulam at the, for taking up the to course. 29th August 1987, for Father Lucas Veduva Tikkal, CMI takes oath as a postulator from Bishop Ma Joseph Kundukulam at the 35th death anniversary of Mother Euphrasia and becomes a servant of God. 
29th August 1987, appointment of Sister Peregrine at St. Mary's Convent, Ollur, as the Vice Postulate. 1st June 1988, received the approval from the Siromalba bishops at the Conference of the Cause. 8th September 1988, Roman Catholics are a, approved the decision for the canonization process. 13th January 1990, official opening of the tomb of a servant of God and interring the body remains. 19th June 1991, official closing of the diocesan tribunal by Bishop Mar Joseph Kundukulam in Lutz, Cath Lutz Cathedral Church. 20th June 1991, records the servant of God is sent to Rome. 20th April 1994, possession of the virtue of the servant of God submitted in Rome. 4th December 1997, miraculous cure of uh, bone cancer of Mr. Thomas Tarakin by the prayers of his sister Rosie through the intercession of Mother Eupresia. 6th March 1999, apostolic miracle tribunal submitted to Vatican. 5th July 2002, Pope John Paul II declares most uh, the Mother Evapresiama as venerable in Rome. 3rd December 2006, beautification of the venerated Evapresia in Olur Foreign Church by guards by the Major Archbishop Cardinal Varki Vidayatil by reading the apostolic letter of Pope Benedict XVI. 20th December 2006, miraculous healing of Jewel Denson's thyroglossal cyst. September 2010, Bishop Pauli Kanukaran submitted the tribunal of uh, the miracle to Rome. 4th July 2013, approval of the medical comments of Joel Jensen's healing. 12th June 2014, declaration of the date of canonization. 23rd November 2014, canonization, canonization of the blessed Eupresia. Thank you, Ria. St. Eupresia grew in humility, poverty, and holiness. As she obeyed the God every moment of her life, let's set her as an example. I would like to end by saying a famous quote by her, Won't forget even after death, Marichalem Marakeliato. Now we'll be back with another saint in another video. Thank you.